Hey guys, how's it all going? So I've always wanted to try out head tracking and track IRs is really expensive in Australia. You're looking at about $300 or more to get your hands on the latest version of track IR. Uh, so I looked into lower cost solutions and one of those solutions was to actually use a Wii remote to emulate what track IR does. And I'll show you in this video how I set up the Wii remote to do that. Now the video might get a little bit long so what I'll do is I'll put some bookmarks in the description below so you can skip to the parts that you want to see. You might be wondering how head tracking actually works. So Track IR's solution is to use an infrared camera that's mounted to the top of your screen. On your head you'll mount three LED infrared lights and that camera will see those lights as points and the software is able to track those points in space. Three point tracking means that the software is able to detect a wider range of motion so not just the rotation of your head but also the translation of your head so say if you lean left and right or if you raise your head up and down or if you lean in towards the screen or back away from the screen the, the software is able to track all of that with three point tracking. Now the solution that I'll be using with the Wii Remote and Wii Sensor Bar will only be single point tracking which means that only rotation of the head will be tracked and not the translation stuff. I could use three point tracking with the Wii Remote but uh, that means I would have to go out and custom make my own three point tracker which actually isn't too hard and there's lots of tutorials out there on how to do that. I'll link to one of the tutorials in the description below but I just wanted to use what was already available to me. So my setup for this experiment was to mount the Wii remote to my head and I did that just by attaching the remote to a pair of wireless headphones. Um, I put the Wii sensor bar on top of the monitor and that's, it's kind of backwards because normally you would have the, the emitter, which is the sensor bar, on your head and the, um, the gun or the camera on top of the monitor. But I found that this particular way of having the Wii remote on my head worked better for me in my testing. Then I connected the Wii Remote to my computer using the Toshiba Bluetooth stack. And the reason why you need to use a Toshiba Bluetooth stack is because the default Windows Bluetooth stack, while it will allow you to connect the Wii Remote to Windows, it won't allow any other software to see the remote. So it's basically pretty useless. There is another Bluetooth stack out there that you can use. It's called Blue Soleil, um, and you can purchase that from their website. Now I went with the Toshiba Bluetooth stack because it's a free download. Um, it does come on a 30 day evaluation trial but there's actually no way to purchase the stack unless you purchase a bit of Toshiba hardware. But there is a registry fix to get around that. For the actual head tracking software I'm going to use a bit of software called FreeTrack which is the only free head tracking software that can actually detect a Wii remote. The only problem with FreeTrack is that development has kind of died on it, so it hasn't been updated for a while, which means that the latest games, for example Elite Dangerous, aren't actually compatible with FreeTrack. To get around this compatibility problem, I'm going to use another bit of software called OpenTrack, which has more compatibility with newer games, uh, but it can't see the Wii Remote, so I have to use both OpenTrack and FreeTrack together. Here I've got some gameplay impressions from Elite Dangerous. I'll be doing Take On Helicopters and iRacing as well. Uh, but first up is Elite Dangerous. I've overlaid the free track software in the top left corner here. Uh, so you can see what's actually happening with the tracking. And you can see that it works really, really well. The head tracking's very quick and very smooth. It's very responsive. Um, I was really, really happy with it in Elite Dangerous, and honestly speaking, it just it does completely change the experience for Elite Dangerous. Um, I would probably find it a little bit hard to go back to playing the game without any head tracking, and that's purely just because it's so much more fun with head tracking. I will say that the Wii Remote adds quite a bit of weight to the top of the headphones, so if I move my head too quickly, um, the headphones could slip around a little bit but that being said I don't think it will be a problem in normal use because 
there was no reason for me to move my head extremely quickly or particularly vigorously. So here I am playing some take on helicopters and I have to say I really really liked having head tracking in take on helicopters. It made the game so much more immersive and so much more fun to play. The head tracking actually feels really really natural. I thought it would feel a little bit weird because the ratio of your head movement to game movement is not exactly one to one because if it was one to one there's no way you could look 180 degrees left and right but it wasn't as weird as I thought it would be and it actually felt quite natural you do have to be a little bit more deliberate with your head movements because the ratio is not exactly one to one but it doesn't take long to get used to at all so for my final gameplay test I've jumped into a practice session in iRacing and you can see that free track is working perfectly fine here as well I think iRacing was actually the most challenging game for me in terms of getting used to the head tracking because I found I was making more mistakes on the track with the head tracking than I was without head tracking that's mainly because I've kind of trained myself to race without any sort of head movement so just looking straight um, getting used to the fact that the camera just points in one direction and you can't actually move the camera around and the other thing is because the head movement again is in a one-to-one -one ratio you do have to kind of think about how you're moving your head you have to be more deliberate about your head movements and in a racing situation where everything's happening so quickly uh, everything needs to be some somewhat second nature to you so accelerating braking steering changing gears all of that needs to be second nature to you to be able to react quickly and with head tracking that's just adding another thing on top of all the other things that you're doing that you need to practice with and get used to get comfortable with before it becomes second nature to you so yes while head tracking and eye racing is great and it's going to be a big help uh, you can look into the corners you can check your side mirrors you can check out the windows for other cars I think that the reality of the situation is when you first add head tracking to something like iRacing you're going to see a performance decrease you're going to be a little bit slower and that's simply because you've got one extra thing you have to think about one extra thing that you have to put practice into using and when you get 100% comfortable with it when it becomes second nature to you that's when you'll really see the benefits of the head tracking technology Now for the nitty gritties, the uh, this actual setup of the Wii Remote, sensor bar and the software. So the first thing I did was set up the Wii uh, Remote and Wii sensor bar. So I attached the Wii Remote to a pair of wireless headphones using a couple of rubber bands. Um, it holds really solidly so it doesn't really wiggle around which is great. And I mounted the Wii sensor bar to the top of my monitor. Then all I need to do is connect the Wii Remote to my computer via Bluetooth and I use the Toshiba Bluetooth stack to do that. All I have to do is click on New Connection, then you push the 1 and 2 buttons on the Wii Remote to set it to Discovery Mode. You'll see the 4 blue lights flash when it's in Discovery Mode. Just follow the prompts in the Toshiba software and the Wii Remote will connect. To check if the Wii Remote was working properly in Windows. I downloaded a bit of software called Win Remote, and you can see that when I shake the Wii Remote, the motion sensor graph moves, which means it's working properly. Once that's done, I turn on the Wii to power the sensor bar, which is important, and I run Open Track in Administrator mode. Now I can do that by using the right click menu or going to the properties and setting that up permanently. In Open Track, I just make sure that the tracker is set to Point Tracker 1.1. You can click on the ellipsis to see more options, and you can see in the options that it will be using my webcam. But it doesn't really matter what device Open Track will be using because I won't be using Open Track for the head tracking. I'm only using it as an interface with the game. I set the protocol in Open Track to Free Track 2.0 Enhanced. And then all I have to do is click start and leave that running in the background. 
Once that's done, all I have to do is start the game, and I've chosen Elite Dangerous here because I know for a fact that Elite Dangerous does not work with free track. Once the game is running, I alt tab back to open track and I can check that open track has detected the game because it will say the game's name in the title bar here. If the name of the game is not appearing in open track, uh, you can try closing the game down and restarting it. Uh, if it still doesn't appear in open track, then it's possible that the game's not compatible with open track. Uh, but I don't have that problem here. So once I've verified that the game is working with open track, I just click stop under the controls and then I can start free track. Now free track does need to be started in administrator mode as well and I set that up in the properties beforehand. In free track I select the source which is Wii Remote number one and click start. Once I click start I'll be able to see a representative 3D model on the left and on the right hand side I'll see the position of the infrared LED. Next to the start button there's the center button which basically allows me to designate the default center position for free track. So say for example I'm looking straight at the screen but the 3D model is maybe skewed to the left or to the right then I can just hit the center button and reset that. Once free track has been started, just alt tab back into the game and the head tracking should work. So the last thing I need to do in free track is tweak the curves and the sensitivity settings. To tweak the sensitivity, you do that in the profile tab. You can save it as different profiles or different games if you like. And to tweak the curves, obviously you just click on the curves tab. Now what the curves actually do is it allows you to apply sensitivity in a non-linear fashion. So the way to think about the curves is the bottom or the x-axis is the degrees of motion that you will actually get in game. So 0 to 180 degrees. And the y-axis represents the field of view of the camera that you're using. So in the end what the graph represents is how much you're real life movement translates to in-game movement. The other thing to note is there's actually two tabs, one for rotation and one for translation. I'm not going to bother with the translation tab because I only have single point tracking, but the translation tab basically works the same as the rotation tab. So under the rotation tab, there's three graphs, one for your, which is pointing your head left and right, one for pitch, which is pointing your head up and down, and one for roll, which is obviously self-explanatory. FreeTrack has some nice presets that you can use as starting points for your graphs, and I'm using the small soft preset for both yaw and pitch. And since I'm only doing single point tracking, it can't actually detect roll, so I'm not I haven't bothered with setting roll. So that's it, I'm all set up to use free track in my games. It's actually really easy, it's a long explanation for something that's not that difficult to be honest. The only other thing I might do is go away and make myself a custom 3 point head tracker that I can attach to my headphones. And that will allow me to get a wider range of movement, not that I need it for things like Elite Dangerous and iRacing, but it will also allow me to, to move the Wii Remote to the top of my monitor get rid of the sensor bar and just have the Wii remote with my custom built 3 point LED tracker. So that's it for this video, thanks for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed it, I hope you learnt something and I'll catch you all later.